be in sure. here with us. Um, everybody, this is Mrs. Gail Wright, and she is from the Wright Aid Foundation, and she is here to read to us, and we're really happy to have her. Let's say, hey! <laughs> and I'm going to mute myself and let you go, Gail, okay? Thank you so Absolutely. much for being here. Absolutely. I'm thrilled to be here. Hi, hi, everyone. Um, I'm excited. I love to read. As I mentioned, you might remember me from the last time that I was with you. Um, I love to read. I have four grandchildren myself, and I read to them as often as I can. In fact, I'm going to have my two little girls um, tonight. So we'll be reading bedtime stories and, um, you know, sharing these types of things. And we we actually spend time writing stories as well um, on our own. So um, wanted to um, say thank you for having me. And um, with that, I'll just dig into the story that I chose for you. So hopefully everybody will be able to see this. The story is about a little bunny who um, faces her fear um, that she has so that she can accomplish something that is her dream. So hopefully as I'm reading this story, you'll be thinking about maybe some things that you might be afraid of and ways that you might be able to accomplish your dream. So hopefully you'll learn a lesson from, from our little friend here. And uh, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on the story. Um, and I'm gonna move a little bit so that I can, can read the story to you. So the story is, How Big Is Your Brave? by Ruth Sukup. And there's our little friend. Okay, are we able to see this okay? So Zippy flopped back and looked up at the stars and the deep dark sky. Zippy is our little heroine of our story. I wonder what it's like up there, Zippy said. If I had just one wish, it would be to hop in a rocket and blast off for outer space. Vroom! Not me, said her brother Gus. I could never go so far from my garden. But when you blast off, I'll cheer you on. <clears throat> the next day at school, the next day, as Zippy and Gus went into town, they paused. They passed by a crowd gathered around a sign. The sign said, Space Camp, launch your own rocket ship, win ribbons for best in space. Zippy's heart soared. Oh, that would be fun, she said. Sign up, Gus urged. Zippy shook her ears. No, 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 she said. Look at all those big critters. I can't compete with them. Going to space is your big dream, Gus said. Wouldn't space camp be a good step like planting the first seed in a garden? Maybe, said Zippy, but it looks way too scary. Back home, Zippy couldn't stop thinking about space camp. She really wanted to go, but when she thought of those big, Smart looking critters signing up, her whiskers shook. Would they laugh at her? Would they think a little bunny had no business aiming for the stars? Zippy looked up. The first stars were just beginning to shine in the wide sky. Oh, how she wished to someday soar near them. Suddenly, Zippy remembered something her grandma used to say, that your why must be bigger than your fear. She stood up and brushed the dirt from her paws. She'd made her decision. If she wanted to go to space, she had to learn everything she could. Scared or not, she belonged at space camp. And there's a little note down here for you to remember, your why must be bigger than your fear. So that means that the reason that you want to do something must be more important than the fear that you have of doing it. Zippy's whisker trembled as she arrived for the first day of camp. She huddled next to her mom as the other campers ran about talking and playing. I keep telling myself to be brave, she whispered, but I'm still scared. Mom gave Zippy's back a pat. 
Being brave does not mean you're never scared, she said. Sometimes courage means taking an action, even when you feel afraid. Zippy watched as two campers began to build a model of the solar system. She took a deep breath and hopped over to them. I, I, I can make Saturn, she offered in a squeaky voice. As she molded clay into a ball and cut out paper rings, Zippy's nervousness vanished. It says action is the antidote to fear. So that means action is the healer to fear. So it helps get rid of fear once you act. At least we hope so. Every morning, the campers learned about space and stars and planets and astronauts. Every afternoon, they worked on their rocket ships. As her rocket ship grew, so did Zippy's confidence. Before long, she was answering questions, asking for help, and making new friends. At home, Zippy read books about famous astronauts. Space camp seems like a lot of work, Gus remarked. I'm just reading these for fun, Zippy said. Once camp is over, I'm starting a space club with two of my new friends. Then you'll be a real astronaut. Then, then you'll be a real astronaut, Gus wondered. Zippy smiled. Not yet. Becoming an astronaut takes a lot of studying and hard work, she explained. That's why we're forming the club. We're going to learn as much as we can together. Our camp counselor says it will be easier to keep our eyes on the stars if we help each other. She says it is something called accountability. And this little sign down here says everyone needs accountability. So we're gonna learn a little bit about accountability here. So accountability is when you have someone that you trust that holds you um, to what you said you're gonna do. So they hold you accountable. After space camp, Zippy carried her rocket ship home to show Gus. He was busy setting up a juice stand to test out his latest concoctions. Wow, your rocket ship sparkles like the sun, Gus said as he swooped the rocket through the air. Careful, said Zippy. Suddenly Gus tripped and crash, splash. Zippy's rocket ship landed in the dirt, crumpled and covered with juice. I'm sorry, Gus said. My perfect rocket ship, Zippy cried. It's ruined. Oh no, what's gonna happen? At dinner, Zippy nibbled on lettuce and looked sadly at her cracked, messy rocket ship. Mom offered to help her fix it. Dad did too. Gus volunteered to repaint it. Zippy shook her ears. There's no paint. There's no point. I'm not going to launch day tomorrow, she said. I'm done with space camp. Dad looked over at the rocket. Such a beautiful creation, and now it's broken, he said. Unfortunately, we can't change that. Skippy slumped. No kidding. But you can change one thing, Dad continued. And that's what you're going to do about it. Bad things happen sometimes. And when they happen to you, only you can decide how to react. You can choose to give up or choose to keep going. It's all up to you. Zippy nodded. She knew what she had to do. What do you think she's gonna do, class? Let's see. Zippy curled up in her room next to her books. She looked at all the pictures of astronauts who came before her. I guess they didn't give up easily, so I won't either, she thought. Time to get to work. And the little note down here says, the only thing you can control is you. It's the only thing you have a decision about. You can control how you act. Zippy found some thick paper and created new fins for her rocket ship. You could paint it silver, Dad suggested. That would add some sparkle to your ship. Zippy munched on a carrot. I have another idea, she said. 
Zippy arrived for lunch day, nervous but excited. She was happy to see her space camp friends and adm admire their rocket ships. They were all beautiful, but Zippy's swirling purple and orange design really stood out. See, here's her ship right here. It's lovely, the teacher said. Were you inspired by the color of Jupiter? Zippy smiled at Gus. No, I was thinking of my brother's garden. He grows the best beets and carrots. Well, that explains the name, the teacher said with a laugh. The critters launched their rocket ships one by one. Zippy's veggie vroom sailed to second place. And thanks to her unique paint job, she received a blue ribbon for the most creative design. There's the ribbon that she got because she was very creative and made it look really super special. That evening, Zippy and Gus flopped back and looked up at the stars. Do you still want to hop in a rocket ship and blast off for outer space someday, Gus asked. More than ever, Zippy said. I wish you would come with me. Only if the rocket ship has a garden, Gus said. Great idea, said Zippy. Astronauts need lots of food in space. And then the question here is, how big is your break? The end. So hopefully you all learned a little bit of something. Um, even adults get scared. Even adults have fears, whether it's when they decide they want to go on a trip. Maybe they're afraid to get on a train or a plane. But if they want to go on that special trip, maybe to meet a friend they haven't seen for a while, they have to get over their fear. They have to learn to be brave in spite of their fear. So their brave needs to be bigger than their fear. So even adults face that. So that's something that you can talk about in your classes in case you're afraid of something, it's okay to talk about it. It's really very good to talk about it if you're afraid of something. So you find a trusted adult, which are all the teachers at your school, at your center there, and you can talk to them about how, how afraid you might be and figure out ways to, to deal with that and to be brave. That's awesome. Gail, can I have you hold up the book that you read and get a good face, you know, with, with, your, with your, let me see your face too. That'll be great. Um, Perfect. Thank you very much. That was a really good book. And I think that has lessons for grownups too. Uh, it does. <laughs> thank, you, thank, you, thank, you. thank you. What? Hey, thank you. Say bye, Vicki. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you liked, liked being here. Yeah, they watched it for a few minutes. <laughs> Okay. Doing thing. <laughs> I know attention spans are, are short for little ones. But that's okay. doing their little toddler thing. All right, we're all yeah, done they're, with they're, it. Those guys are really little. They're 18 months old. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But they do good. But they do good. good. And room five, um, I think they might have gotten off. She sent me a message that um, something happened to the computer. Um, it got smashed during... <laughs> the oh, no. last half hour maybe or maybe before but i'm told her that um you know that it's being recorded for her so no no worries so good good so maybe they can watch it later stop being able to see so <laughs> we'll get to okay. watch it later but okay. that was a really good lesson and i'm sure everybody's going to want to watch it later too so good, good. thank you so, so much for joining us I you're hope welcome you, i hope you have pleasure. a great rest of your day you do. You too. Enjoy those little trick or treaters. Thank you. Enjoy your weekend with your with your granddaughter. Sounds really I will. Cool. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank Have you. a great day. See you later. Bye. Bye. Thank you.